The villain wants to live chapter 151, round table, 1, it's landing, it's landing. Yeah, it is. The airship landed, the two, dozing off after growing tired of looking at the sky, clung to the window again, whoa. 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 The airship slowly landed on the runway, vibrating and shaking, Efferine and Alan's bodies shook, and before long, the steward knocked, Professor Deculian, we've arrived, I encrypted the go board again, stood, and called to Efferine and Alan, let's go? Go? Yes. Yes. As soon as I opened the door to the VVIP room, the steward and the captain were lined up in the hallway, I, familiar with it, walked between them, and Efferine and Alan followed hesitantly, wow, the moment we stepped off the airship, a magnificent sight greeted us, Alan was amazed, and Efferine stood with her mouth agape, the round table was that unique a place, what is all this? The round table was a round table, a spacious, round plate-like space, pink sunset over the horizon colored the world, and the glass floor reflected the light, hey, Deculian? Someone called out to me, a familiar face approached from the other side of the runway, oh, did Leaf come too? It was a helm, he waved his hand as if pleased to see us, gosh, because of you, everyone in the tower is calling me Leaf, Efferine glared at a helm, but he merely shrugged, well, that's good, much better than Efferine, what's wrong with Efferine? I told you, it's not such a good name, anyway, Ehelm looked back at me, Deculian, the round table is calling you? Leaf and your assistant professor will follow me, and Deculian, you go there, with that, Leaf, no, Efferine and Alan tilted their heads, follow him, I'll go alone, oh, okay, be careful, snap, snap Ehelm snapped his fingers and guided them along, follow me, the two newbies, what? Who's the newbie? Asterisk 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 the round table glass a restaurant with an old-fashioned sign. Classical melodies flowed from the pure white interior, and famous wizards who could be recognized glanced. Sat at some? Of the tables, oh. Assistant professor, look at that one, he is the head of the Zobel school, oh, right. Was he called Trojet? Efferine and Alan sat down, watching their faces, thanks to Ehelm flagging them down, the waiter approached within three seconds, can I help you with your order? Oh, yeah, first, the 33-year-old fondue, and parma soup, with jersel, what else? Is there anything that came today? Yes, Slehen and Roahawk dash Roahawk? Efferine nearly began to drool much to the surprise of both a helm and the server, okay, I get it, let's have the Roahawk steak, yes, in addition, the special product of the Valren region, while a helm was ordering, Efferine looked out of the window, reacting to the Roahawk was embarrassing, was this an unconscious reflex or something else, ahem. As so here is the round table, an island of glass located in the middle of the sea, the scenery of the round table was amazing, it's a weird place? After completing their order, Ehelm commented, Efferine asked quickly, Did they say Roahawk is available? Yeah, I ordered the largest, nice, Efferine clenched her fist hidden under the table, it may not be as good as pig's flour, but it would still be delicious because it was Roahawk, anyway, this round table, as you can see, is an artificially created magical space, there are restaurants, houses, bookstores? Anything you can imagine, but I don't like to come here very often, why? This is a hotbed of people watching you, if you do well, you will receive envy and jealousy, there are a lot of damn old people milling about, oh, but why was the professor suddenly invited? That's right, it was so sudden, Efferine asked the question, and Alan nodded his head along with curiosity, Ehelm smirked and sipped at his teacup, it's because of his achievements, what? How much do you guys know about the round table? It's just a place where magic schools gather? If knights had an order, wizards had a school, officially, there could only be three schools per magic branch, and it was said that the round table was a gathering oft-host schools, right, 
It's a gathering place of a total of 24 schools, but it's pretty exclusive. They despise the creation of new schools. Why? Wouldn't it be nice to have a new school? You're so simple. Ihelm shook his head. If they say only 24, it's only 24 in this round table? There can be only three schools per class. For 24, schools that are eliminated will fall out. Oh. Efferine and Alan only then realized what that meant, then, right, that's why Dekulian was called, Ihelm put down his cup, on the floating island and the round table, the potential for Dekulian's thesis is slowly being proven, oh, you know the Dekulian slash Luna thesis, right? Efferine closed her mouth, Ihelm didn't think much of it and just continued, so there are a lot of schools that are desperate right now, to which department is Dekulian's thesis assigned? That's also important, and when he'll be recognized as an elder, above all, the reason he published the thesis without telling them, that is the most important thing, what does that have to do with it? The round table is an old-fashioned society, and being treated as the head of a school at the round table is of great value, you know? If he had told them in advance, even if he were expelled, they would have tried to take advantage of him as much as possible. Why didn't you give us time to discuss matters internally? Something like this, ah, it was an easy-to-understand explanation. Their appetizers came out while Efferine and Alan listened. Efferine asked a question, then why didn't Professor de Killian tell the round table in advance? You know his personality, confidence on the verge of recklessness, self-esteem bordering on arrogance? Ihelm laughed lightly, then, he sighed. He's trying to break the hard-nosed order of the round table. It is a thesis published without anything held back throughout the round table, but it is a true revolution. Efferine and Alan's eyes widened, as if the reaction was pleasant. Ihelm smiled and raised his spoon. You wouldn't know, but when you stick around to Killian or others at our level, every action, every word, every gesture has a political intention. Hmm, indeed? It's almost like a declaration of war. It'll be pretty fun when he becomes an elder, right? I never dreamed that I would say something like this, but he is a reliable guy at times like this. I don't like those damn old men at this round table either. It was then that Efferine sniffed the aroma of the appetizer. She was momentarily startled. The tip of her nose felt ready to melt just from that. Seeing that expression, a smile played on a helm's lips. Eat. Enjoy now, but be careful. Before long, a storm will rage around Dekulian. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. I arrived at the round table president's waiting room. I didn't know what the meeting was about, but a quest notification popped up. Phase quest. Keep the round table in check. Acquisition of qualifications for the quest to become an elder. It appeared to be the first step towards becoming an elder. As chairman, the position of elder was also one of the great achievements, Dekulian, then, a robed woman called me from the other side of the waiting room, Carla, you're here too? Your thesis was a good read, thank you. Nodding, Carla held out a letter to me, this is from Rohakan, I grabbed the letter, is this all? The people at the round table seem very angry, they might be trying to kill you, are they? The round table wasn't a friendly group, rather, they were a hindrance to clearing the main quest, it doesn't matter, I won't die, Carla didn't say anything, she simply sat on the couch in the waiting room and enjoyed the sweets set out on the table, I watched her cram the sweets in her mouth like a hamster. Is your business over? I guess so, then the door to the waiting room swung open, beyond the threshold was a group of wizards, Professor de Killian, it's meeting time, among them, the middle-aged man who appeared to be the leader spoke with a firm expression, I stood and followed him, their steps were quick, but my stride was longer, I did not intend to lose dignity even in this small way, however, no, the middle-aged wizard suddenly turned to look at me, his name was probably Devron, come quickly. What are you doing? Walking slowly? All the wizards stopped. I met their eyes as the silence grew long. I decided to be the one to break it. Devron, what? Devron? No courtesy opening the door is forgivable. No, 
I don't want to lose dignity by pointing it out, but, I walked forward slowly, trampling the floor with the heels of my shoes, when a lowly thing that does not know his place grows arrogant not knowing the favor he is shown, stomp, stomp, dash. Only my footsteps echoed through the hallway, and the magicians of the round table began to hide the hostility they had expressed through their eyes one by one, replacing it with fear, I don't want to accept this, I approached the middle-aged man and looked down on him, forcing his gaze downward, know your place, if someone like you keeps acting arrogant, I might kill you, asterisk asterisk asterisk, after meditating, Safian calmed down again, finally, the piece called laziness had arrived, and the sloth was soaked in comfortable contemplation, she lay on the bed and looked at the snow globe, snow was falling inside the glass while she thought of Chiron and the giant. A giant, an ancient ruler with an infinite lifespan and near-godly potential, however, they had been reduced to the phrase of a myth that a bard sitting near a bonfire recited, Tiktok Safian had met the giant's eyes she discovered a member of a species thought to be extinct, his pupils had an unfathomable depth, revealing a soul that possessed insight into the world, the universe, and the origins of all things, he was connected to the truth, Tiktok the giant and the snow globe. And Deculian and Chiron, Safian traced her memories, thinking about the curse given to her, the power of regression? Tick-tock suddenly, a certain place came to mind, the Imperial Library, where all the history of the continent slept, but Safian had never visited there before, I never knew I would be going there in my lifetime, Safian pushed herself out of bed, she immediately opened the door to the dressing room, it was full of wonderful clothing from the continent and her family, she looked at them and pondered before putting on a hooded robe, she left the bedroom and went down to the basement. Two knights stood at the door of the dark library, their eyes widened with recognition as Safian approached, Your Majesty Dash shut up. Up. That was the end of it, the two knights said nothing further, and Safian opened the door to the library, Creek the tall old man that served as librarian appeared first through the gaps, he was fumbling through the bookshelves, sorting out the books, the owner of this palace appeared, but he didn't even acknowledge her. No, he couldn't, the librarian Lexil had already gone blind, hey, the librarian pulled back his wrinkled hands and turned around, he seemed to have sensed something. In her unusual tone and energy? Your Majesty? Right, are there any legends or myths from the continent, especially books related to giants? Ah, Lexil bowed quickly, yes, I have them, I will guide you. Good, Safian followed Lexil, the corridors of the Imperial Palace Library were long, containing only books, papers, and trees, a question came to mind while she was walking around, looking at the numerous books, librarian, did anyone other than me visit this library? Yes? There is one, he comes quite often these days, who is it? You mean that you accept outsiders so easily? Then the librarian stopped in front of a certain bookshelf, it was a space full of old books, Safian looked up at the books and listened to the librarian, it's the Count Yuckline, Count de Culian? Yes, Safian smirked, can you tell me what books he's read? Yes, of course, when the librarian reached out, several dozen books came at once under his magic. Also, I have a summary of his thoughts, thoughts? Yes, Safian couldn't hide her surprise, Lexel took out the books Deculian had read and placed them on a desk, I lend the book and receive permission for my magic, what my magic is, is to win the thoughts of the readers, take their thoughts. Yes, it's a magic that requires the subject's consent, but the professor was happy to comply, good, show me, Deculian's thoughts? What was he thinking while reading this book? It seemed kind of fun, was there anything unusual about him? He was a very polite nobleman, Lexil laid his hand on the books, and he copied the thoughts that Deculian had as he read, this was why Lexil was able to work as a librarian in the Imperial Palace for so long, of course, it wasn't an ability that worked without the other party's consent, not only by word, but also by mental permission, 
but all of the thoughts they had while reading could be copied and put on paper. Lexil was the only surefire defense mechanism of the Imperial Palace Library. Good, you can go, yes? When Lexil left, Safian picked up the thinnest of the many books, starting with the collection of poems, The Bardess Giant, hmm, there was nothing special about this book, a lyric book, it just recorded the song of the bards as they were, therefore, there was nothing special about Dekillian's thoughts that were copied on the pages of this book, did he enjoy it as if he was savoring it, or did he quit after reading a few pages? There's nothing, but the book of the bard, its final chapter. Held to Killian's thoughts, several lines were laid out, Safian had a little trouble understanding them, there are few references to the songs of the minstrel? Nothing special, however, at the end of a certain song, the phrase giant and emperor is particularly concerning, lyrics close to the prophecy that the giant recognizes the emperor and the emperor recognizes the giant, reading those bizarre lyrics, I'm hoping for some reason that Safian is happy. He wanted Safian to be happy, the emperor's eyes were stuck on one such cheeky sentence. The villain wants to live chapter 152, round table, 2, there are few references to the songs of the minstrel, nothing special, however, at the end of a certain song, the phrase giant and emperor is particularly concerning, lyrics close to the prophecy that the giant recognizes the emperor and the emperor recognizes the giant, reading those bizarre lyrics, I'm hoping for some reason that Safian is happy. Safian flipped through the pages of the poetry book again, quickly discovering the verse, the emperor and the giant recognize each other, and all humanity and the giants, having otherwise no attachment to the world, are wandering in search of something to replace the nothingness, when a light is turned on in a dark world, darkness will cover the continent? Only then will humans know, they will realize like the giants, in the end, what was lost was a knot, the end that was not given to them, the stigma left like a curse, lyrics lacking a melody, the emperor closed the book and flipped through the next stiffly, archaeology, evidence of giants, Many of Dekillian's thoughts were buried in this document, Safian rested her chin in her hand and read, the continent is vast. It must have been the same for the giants, though they had large bodies. And far-reaching wisdom, that alone would not have been enough, however, given more time, they would have been able to see everything in the world, they could have crossed continents, sailed the seas, and reached the end of the world? world? At the end of it, the giants would have lost their will to live, Safian suddenly raised her eyes and looked across from the table, Dekillian appeared like a fantasy in the empty seat, sitting upright and reading a book, his thoughts were conveyed in a whisper, but the humans couldn't, a human body cannot handle a world so vast, they couldn't see it and didn't dare cross it, humans harbored the desires of giants, but they did not have towering legs or infinite time, they wanted to step across all the lands of the world, but they couldn't, they wanted to reach the truth, but they couldn't, they wanted to be the most powerful being, but they couldn't, humans are, after all, dead beings. Now she knew what she had in common with the giant, humph, Safian knew nothing of the distant future, as time passed, and when the time to return to nature arrived, would she repeat this infinite regression, or would that moment be the last? Until the end comes, but if it was not the last, the end did not exist for her, humans always want their needs to be met, if they don't have money, they want money, if they have no one to keep around, they want someone, if their dignity is impugned, they want to honor it, so, bizarrely, immortal humans would eventually wish for death at some point, the reason Dekillian wanted her happiness came from that contradiction? Do you think they would not want death if they were happy all their life? Maybe they would, if this life were as happy as this winter, she wouldn't even consider the thought of dying, however, if you felt happy every second for the rest of your life, you would be classified as mentally ill, in technical terms, you would be suffering from mania, librarian, Safian called for Lexel standing next to her, Lexel bowed his head, yes, I'm here, she looked at the cover of the book for a moment, can you erase it? Yes, it is possible. 
Lexel replied as if he had been waiting. Safian closed her eyes and nodded, erase it, yes, Lexel laid his hand on his book again, and Deculian's thoughts were erased, Safian picked up the book again, opening the pages, Deculian's thoughts no longer resided in it, she read the book slowly, Russell. Russell, Safian accepted the countless sentences, falling silent, but, at some point, she lifted her face, with sunken eyes, she looked to the empty seat opposite her, for some reason. I want you to be here, asterisk 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 the round table's grand hall, Ephraim and Alan sat in the grandstand as Deculian's disciples, separated by glass from the main hall? There is something strange about this atmosphere, I know, Ephraim nodded agreement to Alan, as such, the composition of the hall was too daunting. Deculian sat in the center of the hall, and the twenty-four chiefs of the round table sat around the center looking down at Deculian, monarch Deculian, the eldest wizard spoke, Ephraim knew his name was Zecton, the head of the Pagan School of Destruction, you submitted an unproven thesis to the floating island without saying anything to the round table, do you have anything to say on this point, his tone was aggressive, but Deculian looked straight into Zecton's as he answered, it's a thesis that hasn't been proven yet, so what does it matter? Zecton's brow twitched, a gesture mimicked by the other head sitting around him, even a helm was surprised, but not Ephraim, have you forgotten the round table? There was nothing to forget about, I simply submitted my thesis, Zecton quickly became speechless, at that moment, Ephraim had a thought, this meeting wouldn't last long, the other side would renege first, I don't think we'll need the prepared documents. I didn't know that Yuckline would disrespect the round table so much. Disrespect. Did you forget the amount that Yuckline has donated to the round table? Most of the old wizards cleared their throats and stared at Deculian. Even if the floating island accepts your thesis, it is not entirely your work, Kagan Luna. You just followed the intention of one who has already died, the teaching assistant under you. At that moment, Ephraim bit her lip, why was that damned old man suddenly selling her father's name to attack Deculian, that's right, Deculian answered matter of fact, humph the old man twisted their lips and shook their heads, however, but his daughter is my disciple, disciple, at that moment, Ephraim startled, and the faces of the round table furrowed, Alan turned to Ephraim, eyes narrowed, oh, that, well, hey, Assistant Professor Allen is not a disciple but a partner? That, kind of relationship, hmm, Allen quickly turned his head away jealously, if a school is created, that child, not me, will lead it anyway, the reason is, Ephraim looked to Deculian, her face frozen in place, she will take care of providing the proof, so, it's a fixed thing, Zecton's wrinkles deepened? He clicked his tongue, I don't think we're on the same page, the round table won't simply stand and watch, then a smirk crept across Deculian's lips, well, if you don't, neither will I, even though the twenty-four heads looked down at him, he didn't step down, but not all of you will agree with that, rather, his power alone appeared enough to overwhelm the round table, everyone hid their emotions, but Deculian knew what they were thinking, he glanced around at them with a deep smile, there is still plenty of time, I'll listen more carefully to what you have to say, he wore the snake-like smile that Ephraim hadn't seen in a while. How dare you? The invitation ends here, leave the round table, whether that cold retort was terrifying, whether he was scared, Zecton quickly kicked out Deculian, asterisk 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 as soon as I returned from the round table, I received several threatening letters, most of them were from the round table but there were also some from who I presumed to be the altar and demon blood, as well as those from Rohakan, hey. Disciple, it's nice to see you doing well, I heard that you got the round table in an uproar, those old men should be scolded once in a while, but I didn't know you would be the one to do it, you did scold them, right? Don't be the one to get scolded, and, do you know what the coin enclosed with this letter is? Voices world? It's still a long way from being officially opened, but keep it, 
don't throw it away because you can communicate with it, let's keep in touch, ha ha ha, so that's what I think, to be honest, I think the round table shouldn't exist anymore, while reading the letter, the middle-aged wizard visiting my office spoke, it was Devron, who'd pulled up, this one seemed to have made up his mind to stick with my camp, I see, I nodded and took out a golden toad from the drawer, take it? Ah, you don't have to a decorative and magical artifact, it responds to aggressive magical powers and murderous intent, so it won't be bad to keep around, yes, Devron didn't hesitate to accept it, his tone grew more polite, there must be magicians who agree with me, I will approach them as carefully as possible, I nodded silently as Devron bowed his head, yes, then, I'll go, go carefully, yes, Devron tightened the robe around him once more and left. Then, Efferine walked in. Efferine glanced at Devron's back, then looked to me again, what do you want? Oh, here. I have compiled the thesis up to the part one understand, she set down the documents, there were a total of three hundred pages, I skimmed it for a while, finding no noticeable problems, there doesn't seem to be any major mistakes or leaps in logic, oh, thanks, Dash are you ready to leave? Yes? Efferine's bright eyes shone blankly upon me. I put down the thesis and stared at her. We're going north soon, did you forget? Then Efferine's jaw fell slightly. Oh, right. Get ready, yes. Efferine quickly ran away. I didn't know what she would prepare, but she had grown, so I was sure it would be fine. North, now, the number of enemies would gradually increase, and the world would enter the middle phase. It wasn't impossible to predict what the altar would do, but, we needed to be well prepared, I looked out the window of the office, checking the blue sky and white ground. Evidence of winter covered both as bare trees peeked up from the snow, asterisk 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 the northern business trip was next week, so Efferine, Allen, and Drent were busy preparing their luggage, the three of them walked around together and grabbed this and that for their trip, first, we bought emergency food, bedding, what is it, Drent? Drent was fiddling with stones in the middle of the market, Efferine felt sad for some reason, watching him with those empty eyes, are you still working on that stone? Huh? Ah, it seems I'm almost there, Deculian stone test, with Rose Rio in the lead, Efferine, Luina, Credo, and other wizards began to clear one by one, but Drent was still? struggling, sigh, I was the one who gave a hint, so why am I the only one who can't do it? As he said, Drent was the first to hypothesize that a password was embedded in the stone, forget it, that's not a test, anyway, get ready to go north, huh? Isn't this a test? Yeah, they said we were mistaken, it was just a performance evaluation, oh, still, it is an evaluation. Drent seemed down again, and Efferine and Alan started moving busily again, done. Now that. Bring your armor. We should wear leather armor inside too, you know how many monsters there are in the north? Yes. Now we're talking. All three of them went into a building with a sign reading army shop, and, next week arrived, honked Dash, the horn roared, Efferine and Alan, standing on the platform, looked at the train smoke blowing in the wind. Gulp, the day of their trip was here, Efferine swallowed hard at the tension building up late, however, looking at Deculian standing next to her, she immediately calmed down, he looked like he was going to a vacation spot, Professor, what are we going to do in the north? Deculian answered Alan briefly, exploration and investigation, explore? Yes, the north borders on unexplored land, the north was called an extreme land, but strictly speaking, it wasn't, even further north, there was an unfamiliar and unexplored land, a non-human continent famous for holding the name Annihilation? Investigating by inferring the condition of the unexplored land, and pursuing a magical discovery based on the magical phenomenon of the north, Deculian turned to Ephraim, if we are lucky enough to witness the aurora, you will be able to experience a momentary step forward, Aurora, the most famous magical phenomenon on the continent, 
It had a reputation for being a special event that raised the level of a wizard by simply observing it, creak, the train stopped, and moments after, the captain and station attendant got off to first greet Dekulian, it's an honor to have you on our train, professor. An honor. Dekulian didn't answer but turned to Ephraim, Alan, and Drent, still fiddling with the stone, let's go, asterisk asterisk asterisk. The imperial palace still bloomed in winter, but the atmosphere of this mysterious place where eternal spring and eternal winter coexisted felt subdued today. He's moving around a lot these days, huh? Last time he went to the round table, and now he's heading north. The cause of the overall down atmosphere was Emperor Safian. She heard something today on the news that Dekulian had left for the north. It must be because it is winter, the round table? And the north. There will be a lot of things to prepare for, Jolong bowed and answered. Safian looked down to her board with clear dissatisfaction. The day we scheduled the fifth game of Go for, humph, he's not even a fly. Jolong read her face to see whether or not to agree with this complaint or to watch. What will you do, Your Majesty? If Dekulian doesn't come back by the day, dash, it doesn't matter. Yes, Jolong thought he did well by just watching. Let's start the Northern Patrol? He was stunned for a moment by Safian's declaration that followed. He couldn't understand what he had just heard. However, Jolong was not foolish enough to ask for clarification in haste. Why are you so surprised? The Northern Patrol was always done by the Emperor. Safian laughed with disdain. Jolong quickly bowed. Yes, Your Majesty, the Emperor also visits the Northern Estates once a year in winter. Dash right, Safian interrupted Jolong. So, that means I will do the same, I understand. Jolong shrugged without a further word, get ready, one horse will suffice, did you say his name was Twilight? The stallion of the imperial palace was special, in a way, it could be said that it resembled a tiger, the most outstanding mare and male horses on the continent were interbred, raising an impeccable mount for the emperor, thus, he, like a tiger, ran only for the emperor and galloped through the air, Yes, Your Majesty, we will prepare. Good, now leave. Yes, Your Majesty. Safian stood as soon as Jolong left to head to her dressing room. What kind of clothes would she wear north? What clothes to wear to face him? No, to patrol? Hmm. Safian looked through the numerous outfits and pondered. The villain wants to live. Chapter 153. Ephraim's time, one, it also snowed on the floating island, though it was a magical phenomenon that the wizards artificially implemented, if they didn't, many addicts wouldn't know the change of time and seasons, in the city center of the floating island, Sylvia stepped through the snow while waiting for Idnik, she stepped to deliberately make a sound, ding-a-ling, dash, at that moment, the door of the magic shop opened with the ring of a bell, Idnik, carrying a backpack, stepped out and handed Sylvia a newspaper, read it, Sylvia took the newspaper without a word, her expressionless eyes scanned the text. Deculian and Julie were in the headlines, they say that the divorce is in progress, but there is a lot of gossip, rumor has it that Deculian killed both Baron and Rock Fell, no, Sylvia shook her head, then she pointed to Julie in the newspaper, this woman is stupid, what are you talking about all of a sudden? Sylvia knew what Baron did to Deculian, what happened between the two, also, how much Deculian loved Julie, but this stupid woman didn't know that, she didn't know anything, forget it. With Sylvia's blunt reply, Idnik shrugged, is that so? Anyway, you're ready, right? Yes, but dash here, what you asked for, Idnik handed a stone to Sylvia, the stone was called Deculian's test. As soon as the Imperial Magic Tower distributed it to the floating island, it became hugely popular, she could tell by looking around right now, as a similar stone was being held by almost every wizard she could see, more were sitting on tables in cafes and restaurants, she even noticed a fainted wizard at one table, a stone by their head, hmm, gosh, he's a master at making. Trends, at Idnik's words, Sylvia looked at the stone, however, just by staring at it with her mana, it moved, oh? 
And, did you know that de Culian privately published his writing? Sylvia raised her head, writing, Yes, it's very noisy because of that. It was published privately and hasn't been released to the public, also. I don't think it's going to be sold due to de Culian's nature. Rumor has it that the library on the floating island has increased its security to protect their copies. Increased security, there are five books. There seemed to be some wizards who were seriously thinking about robbing the library. Sylvia bit her lip. The wizard de Killian was accomplishing much on the floating island. His theory was now treated akin to royalty on the floating island. Sylvia, aren't you curious too? Sylvia pondered for a long time before she opened her mouth. Maybe I can borrow it. What do you mean? De Culian's theory, hmm? Sylvia immediately turned around and ran to the library, then, sprinting with her magic, all she left was an afterimage? Before long, she arrived on the tenth floor of the floating island's magician. This was the gathering place of all the books in the world, the Penta Mall. Sylvia approached the librarian at the info desk. You came, etheric Sylvia. He nodded as if he was waiting. Then he handed her one of the books, double and triple sealed, Yuckline Theory. Essence read carefully. This item is classified as a second-level book, also. This is a note from Monarch Deculian to Etheric Sylvia. Sylvia was. Handed another small piece of paper containing a short sentence written in Deculian's elegant handwriting. I look forward to the day you kill me, Sylvia. Asterisk 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 a blizzard spread outside the train window. The raging blade-like wind scattered pure white dust around them. But the inside of the room was warm. Look here. That's why you should have studied the theory a little harder. I could have learned if it wasn't that difficult. Drent was teaching Efferine while Alan quietly knitted, the only sound being the occasional rumble from the engine. This peaceful atmosphere wasn't bad either, for me, for Efferine, or Alan because I knew this. Quiet wouldn't last long, Professor. What book are you reading? I showed Alan the cover, the complex properties of the dual series magic circuit and the dynamics of magic for correct operation. Hee <laughs> hee. Alan chuckled in a silly way and held out a tuft of fur she had knit into a scarf. Here, so your neck doesn't get cold. I don't need it. Oh, okay. Alan lowered her face as if a little disappointed. Let's consider that I gifted it to you. I don't get cold, so you wear it. Oh, oh okay. Creak. Just then, the train slowed down with the sound of scraping iron. The three assistants stood quickly and packed their things. Knock, knock. We have arrived, Professor de Culian. The attendant knocked and led us out of the train. Ugh, it's cold, why yeah. Thus we arrived at the Mazar station in the north. As soon as I stepped onto the open platform, Efferine and Alan wrapped their arms around their shoulders. I looked around, a bleak landscape greeting me. There wasn't a single person in sight, and the snowy mountain ahead was faintly visible through the obscuring blizzard. There is no one here. It seems that everyone is. Refraining from going out because it is winter, the conductor explained, Let's go, yes? Outside the platform were four horses. He, he dash, seeing the agitated horses, Efferine and Alan swallowed hard, those two suffered from a disease known as horse-riding sickness, asterisk 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 the destination where we arrived was the northern fortress Resental, you can stay here, we call it a small magic tower, but I am embarrassed to introduce it to a professor from the imperial magic tower, it's quite a distance from the training ground so that you can stay comfortably, the officer who guided, Explained, it was a cylindrical and small tower with five floors. But, given it was in the north, it was rather tall by comparison, I understand, yes, take a rest from your travels, your assistance too. When the officer left, Efferine, Alan, and Drent quickly went to their rooms, Efferine smiled brightly, I'll take this one. This is my room. What? If you're the youngest, use the smallest room, what? Don't you know about talent? The assistant professor gets the biggest room? Then me. I left them on the first floor and went upstairs. It was clear that the equipment laying there was quickly prepared for the wizards coming on a business trip. 
The third floor was a laboratory equipped with various tools, the fourth floor was a reading room, leaving the fifth floor as the space for me to stay, however, hello, there was an unexpected guest already waiting for me, brother, or I guess you're not anymore. A clear voice and a soft smile, my eyes met Josephine's. What are you doing here? Oh, it's nothing? Just. I'm here to offer a warning, Josephine laughed softly, warning, that's right, oh, I don't mean anything aggressive, we identified the start of a mana phenomenon in this part of the country, Josephine handed me some photos, one of a red thunderbolt, then a shimmering aurora, and the tail of a comet falling then ascending, this all happened two days ago, in particular, as if going against time, the comet fell and soared again, soared and fell again, and then disappeared bite-wisting. Space, I don't know. You can overcome anything, but people like the newbies downstairs who are sensitive to magic might be caught up, I nodded, thank you for the information, so dash Julie is doing well, still hates you, a smile appeared on Josephine's lips, but at the same time, she looked at me with hardened eyes, her health is improving, Julie is overcoming it herself, I'm glad, Josephine rested her chin against her hand and tilted her head, it's amazing, brother? I didn't think it would be just like you said, didn't I tell you? I don't lie, hoo-hoo, you don't, she looked back at me, chuckling playfully, is this, what you wanted? I looked into her eyes without a word, her pure white irises sparkled like glass, those eyes resembled Julie's, I want Julie to live, at those words, Josephine took a deep breath, then mumbled with a small smile, you, too, love Julie as much as I do, the villain's fate, death variable extinction, store currency plus two death variable extinction? It was a sentence I'd never seen before? Perhaps it meant that Josephine's intention to kill me had completely disappeared. Could this mean that this skeptical sociopath finally trusted me? Then I'll just go. But if anything happens, please contact me at any time. Josephine laid a crystal ball down on the table, then faded away like a shadow. I sat across from her and looked out the window. The sleet was falling like petals outside. Asterisk 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 the next day Efferine woke early in the morning, to dark outside the window but feeling. Strangely refreshed, Mana was overflowing from her, what? A ball of fire rose from her hand? And? It was the simplest magic one could use to tell a magician's condition, and from it, she could tell her concentration and power were exceptional today. Leaf, what are you doing? Then Drent appeared with a sleepy expression. He rubbed his eyes. Oh, Drent, you're unusually energetic today. Yeah, oh, right. We're supposed to work on public support today, right? Right, Drent went into the bathroom yawning, and Efferine rolled up her sleeves. This overflowing vitality is a good thing. Read this fan translation on our official site, A.T. The new, she shouted cheerfully heading off near immediately to their first destination, the village near the fortress, oh my gosh, how could a precious wizard come to such a shabby place? Is there anything I can do to help? The barricades did collapse a bit, but, I'll help you. Where is it? Yes? Oh. I will guide you, Efferine restored the barricade that had been destroyed by a recent monster invasion. She also repaired the vigilante's weapons, the herbalist's equipment and cut down trees to provide firewood for the winter. Kid, how old are you? I am ten years old, I'm not a kid, hi hi, I see. She stroked the cute-looking boy's head, he was short and looked very young, but he was a skillful herbalist or something, according to the villagers, your name is? I'm Zufin, well, Zufin, then. Keep up the good work on gathering herbs, yes, Zufin nodded stiffly and went straight into the woods, Efferine watched him leave with a hand on her waist, now, everyone. She turned to the people gathered around her. Anything else? No, it's fine now, yesterday a shooting star fell in that forest, dash, it's okay. Oh, there were a lot of weeds over there for livestock feed, I'll grind them for you. Efferine moved vigorously, 
at that very moment, as she was about to step into the forest and clear the pile of weeds, dash huh? She found a mysterious pond, it appeared to be dug deep in the middle of a bunch of bushes, the water sparkled like a star, and clear manna was bubbling out. Ephraine tilted her head and approached for a closer look, what is this? Silently she looked into the pond, Ephraine's face was reflected on the surface, these days, the more time passes, the prettier I get, ahem. Anyway, the color and light of this pond were so pretty that she reached out her hand without realizing it, the hand inside the pond and the hand outside the pond touched bzzz dash, and sparks of electricity sputtered out with stinging pain, ugh. Surprised, Ephraine quickly pulled back, flicking the water off her fingers, she looked at the pond, what is this? Should she ask the professor? This pond itself could be a mana phenomenon, Ephraim thought so and went back the way she had come. But, it was strange, the road was different, this wasn't the path she had just walked. First of all, the snow had piled up much higher than it had been ten minutes ago, and the weather was much colder, she didn't know how to express it any further, but it was bizarre, what is this now, huh? Hey! Then she noticed a young man passing by. Ephraim quickly waved her hand to him. The herbalist-like man shuffled towards her. Yes, speak. What just happened to the town? What happened? Yes, Ephraim nodded over and over. But when she checked the man's face a bit closer, her eyes widened. Huh? What's wrong? No way. He was taller than Ephraim and a young man in his twenties. However, that youngish face was one she had seen recently. Are you Zephan? Hmm? How do you know my... Oh, the young man seemed to recognize Ephraim, the wizard I saw in the past. You haven't aged at all. What do you mean? Well, no wonder, you came with that professor, professor. Yes, there was a professor who came with you last time, right? Where? Ephraim asked loudly. Zuffin pulled back and answered a bit reluctant now, he's waiting at the town hall, but, Ephraim ran to where Zuffin was pointing, she sprinted through the snow-covered road surface, shocked by the sights that greeted her, what, the village was no longer a village, a market filled with people suddenly appeared in a simple village until just now, and merchants and residents in fur clothes were bargaining loudly around her, what is this? Ephraim trudged along. For some reason, she felt timid, pulling in both her hands to her chest. The town hall that Zuffin mentioned wasn't far away. Over there, the town hall, when she saw it this morning, it was just a hut, but suddenly, it grew bigger. Ephraim was bewildered, but for now, she focused on finding the professor as she grabbed the doorknob, gulp she swallowed hard, nervous, and opened the door slowly. Creak a man wearing a black robe could be seen through the gap in the Open door, he was sitting in a chair and reading a book, a lamp illuminated him, and Ephraim. Professor? Then he turned, only the lower half of his face visible under the hood, but Ephraim could tell who he was at a glance, Deculian, he rolled up his sleeves with a hard face and tapped his watch. You should have told me the exact time, Ephraim, yes? What is that, 6, colon, 0, 5 p.m.? Deculian took off his robe hood, he was as neat as ever, you're five minutes late, when you go back, say it's 6.05. Not six o'clock. Ephraim moved her lips wordlessly again and again and eventually tilted her head, eh? She felt like her spirit was leaving her body, however, all the changes that Ephraim witnessed as she walked through the burgeoning town resulted in only one realization, time, no way and the future, Deculian nodded, his brow furrowed slightly as if she had realized it too late, you're right, there was some confusion about your time. I came here for that, seeing her stunned, Deculian then smiled warmly, ugh, but that smile was far more shocking, frankly more than their current magical situation, so Ephraim let go of her mind for a moment, bang dash, she collapsed and slammed her head against the wooden floor. The villain wants to live chapter 154, Ephraim's time, 2, Ephraim opened her eyes, 
The first thing she saw was the wooden ceiling, magic lights dangling down above her. Haia Efferine vacantly blinked and opened her mouth wide in a yawn, shaking the sleep away. Gah, that's been going on for a while. At that moment, Efferine stiffened. With a creak, she turned her head to follow the voice. It came from Dekillian. As expected, ah, uh, my dream dash, it wasn't a dream, Dekillian put. Down the book that he was reading? Then, he looked at her with strangely kind eyes. Efferine was afraid of his new display of thoughtfulness. It wasn't like him. Why, no. Are you the professor? That's right, Dekulian answered calmly. Aren't you a monster? What? No, no, where am I? Why is the kid suddenly big in the village? You are caught up in a magical phenomenon. Was it because of the pond in the middle of the forest? No, she just touched the water for half a second. Was it so wrong that it twisted the scales of time? Dekillian explained the reason as she racked her brain. Because you are a special existence, what? You'll find out about the rest gradually, follow me. Dekillian stood, and Ephraim clambered out of bed to follow. The two came out into the village assembly hall first. Oh, the landscape of the north with its sharp winds. But, people were coming and going their expressions filled with energy, the accommodations present before, shops, market, restaurants, pubs. Efferine was speechless to see the steadily growing village sprawled around her. How many years has it been? I'm not sure. What? Ah, so even the professor doesn't know how many years has passed. Deculian stalked forward. Efferine struggled to keep up with his pace. No, professor, more than that. How can this kind of magical phenomenon be possible? Isn't time traveling impossible? It is for ordinary wizards, but you're not ordinary. Was that a compliment or a curse? Ephraim looked up at Dekillian then set her gaze on the road behind them. A delicious scent wafted past them, hinting at heavily seasoned chicken skewers. Gulp, Dekillian smiled. Are you hungry? Asterisk slurp asterisk, oh, no, but, what do you mean not ordinary? It's because of your origin, Ephraim tilted her head, making her confusion obvious, origin? You'll find out later on, what, she thoughtlessly glared at Dekulian, but then glanced away for fear of being scolded, but, the professor didn't seem to be in a bad mood, seriously, what was this? A big question mark floated above Ephraim's head? Of course, anyway, this is the future, right, how do I go back? Back to the present? I don't know, is that so? What? Ephraim grew flustered as she asked back, she thought that Dekillian would know, what she should do, how to do this, he would naturally tell her all the answers, this is the future, the connection between the present and the past and the future is not a simple thing, then, how? You should wait, until the path opens again, the path? Yeah, Dekillian nodded, then, he handed a skewer over to Ephraim, using psychokinesis, how does the path open? Maybe, on the day the second comet falls, aha, uh -huh. Ephraim belatedly recalled the words of the village people, about two days ago, a meteor fell in the forest, so she should be careful, when would that be? Nom, she took a bite of the chicken skewer. Nom, 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 the first bite was so delicious, so she picked up speed eating, we don't know that? Either, it could be in three days, a week, a month, or maybe even a year. At that moment, Ephraim suddenly stopped chewing, she looked up at Dekillian with startled eyes, feeling like a deer in the headlights, Dekillian let out a low laugh, don't worry, but, this was both strange and interesting. When she listened to him, even just his words, all her worries and anxieties disappeared, that was what happened when she was next to Dekulian? He never changed, always remaining consistent, he was always calm, no matter how ridiculous the situation was, I just trust and rely on him, but, I'll be by your side until then, yes, what? Her heart fluttered a little, and she felt light-headed, Ephraim was lost for words for a while, she blinked, then shifted her gaze somewhere else, 
looking for anything or anyone to focus on, wow. Look at that person. Is that real tiger leather? She hurriedly pointed at a person with tiger skin all over his body like armor. Efferine disappeared. The last eyewitness account from the villagers was two days ago. A meteor fell into the forest. What should I do, Professor? Efferine might have been eaten by bears or tigers. Ellen and Dredd felt restless, but I wasn't really worried. I knew at least that there was no death awaiting Efferine in her future. There's nothing to worry about. Let's start the mission. I'll assign a task for each of you. I wrote an official letter for mobilizing cooperation. It was a document asking soldiers from the nearby fortress to help with the mission. Ellen? Take this and collect soil near the unclaimed land along with a soldier escort. Yes, Ellen nodded, pouting, Drent, you, thud, then, the door on the first floor opened, at the same time, three knights walked in, they stepped in without a sound other than the metallic clinking of their armor, they looked in all directions and searched between the walls and ceilings, in the end, one of the knights spoke token firm that there was no problem, you can come in now, your majesty, majesty? Majesty? Alan and Drent blankly asked back, I looked through the wide open door, click click, a woman appeared wearing a large fur coat that went from her shoulder down to her knees, fiery red long hair that cascaded down her back, and a pair of sunglasses, Emperor Safian, a unique individual, had appeared, greet your majesty. The assistants quickly bowed and knelt on one knee at the knight's prompting, Safian approached and looked at me, it's been a while. Deculian, she spoke with a happy tone, but I kept my eyes down at her heels, it's nice to see you, your majesty, never mind, get up. I stood and faced Safian, she took off her sunglasses, regarding me with crimson eyes, I was looking for you at the northern temple, the northern temple? Was the sun going to rise in the west tomorrow? Safian and temples were a weird combination but I suddenly understood with the explanation that followed, that's right, to resolve the second match that I promised you, three minutes later, Safian laid on the sofa on the fifth floor, hmm, less than a few minutes passed since the world's most aloof emperor triumphantly arrived in stylish clothing, this sofa isn't very comfortable. She quickly became a sloth, maybe it was because of the rapid temperature change, as the inside of the mini tower was quite warm compared to the sub zero temperatures outside, yes, I used Midas hand on the sofa that Safian lay upon, thinking three levels should be enough. Mana permeated into the leather from my hands. How does it feel now? Hmm, that's interesting. It has gotten better. Safian let out a big yawn and rolled around. One of her legs hung from the head of the sofa and the other one lay half off the side as she spread out to reach maximum comfort. Your Majesty, are you here to play a game of Go? I'm here for two reasons, we have to patrol, the North? Ha Ia, Safian was already half asleep, this place is too small to serve as a base for the Northern Patrol, you're too loud, you talk too much, get out. She kicked the sofa and shouted, then, she began to nod off as if to flaunt her fatigue and idleness, which was close to becoming an incurable illness, ha, ha, fortunately, her sleeping habits weren't bad, Safian fell asleep with a quiet snore, watching her, I suddenly remembered something, Efferine, where did that kid go? I wasn't worried because I knew she would be fine, but I couldn't deny a level of curiosity. The meteor must be related to the magical phenomenon? But where and how was she struggling? Asterisk, 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 I caught it. On the other hand, Efferine was spending her time in the future with Deculian, just like now, fishing, reading books, learning what she hadn't yet from Professor Deculian. The only difference from the past was that this Deculian was a little warmer. What happened in the future that the professor became like this? She was curious about that, but he wouldn't say even if asked, so there was no way of knowing, look, professor, isn't this really expensive meat? It's called ice fish, if it's that big? That would be about 300 elms, 300 elms. Efferine's eyes widened as she grabbed the fishing rod, 
De Killian started a fire and watched, thinking of making grilled fish, whying, the fishing line was thrown back off, and Efferine watched De Killian make fish skewers, slurp, when she instinctively wiped away her drool, De Killian's hand stopped, at that moment, the atmosphere grew stiff, the space around them froze, and De Killian's expression froze over, murderous intent overflowed from him, why, what is going on? On. De Killian looked to Efferine, then, he spoke in a very low voice, the reason why I did not tell you much is that interfering here in the future will have a huge impact on the past, what? But, you are not the only one who knows about this, Efferine belatedly became aware of the smell of blood not too far away from her, there is someone who is wasting their time on useless efforts, De Killian put the finished fish skewer on the fire, crackle, De Killian pulled out his mana, feeling unusual, Efferine also prepared an attack spell, so, you mean. Professor, that is. These are foolish people who think that if they kill you now, then you will also die in the past, you're a very important person here in the future, you know, Efferine nodded, and at that very moment, there was no sound, just the gentle movement of the wind, but Efferine had difficulty keeping up even with their movements as it seemed dozens of monsters began to gather around them, clang, then the clanking of metal. Efferine raised her barrier, worried that it might not be enough. At the same moment, a snowy white crystal rose next to Deculian and flashed vividly. The space was cut apart as hundreds of monsters started to rush in, their bodies being torn apart by the wood steel. However, their blood was frozen in the air, Deculian's snowflake obsidian burned their enemies as it froze them, stopping them in their tracks. The battle was finished instantly. The field was covered in frozen shards of blood and pieces of flesh that then began to disappear. The flames of the snowflake obsidian cleansed the world in a flash of lightning. It spread in all directions, radiating light as it melted the monsters down to ash. Efferine couldn't understand even as it unfolded before her eyes, but Deculian explained it simply. It is called the snowflake obsidian. Whying, the wind shook the mountain. They will continue to target you, but you have nothing to worry about, that is why I'm here. At those words, Efferine's lips parted to form a dumbfounded expression, but in that silence, Efferine discovered something very strange. She now understood what it meant when one's senses heightened before the battle. As Efferine stared at Deculian, her intuition rang the warning, from the Deculian before her now. There wasn't a single sound a human should make, his body was too quiet. In other words, his heart wasn't beating? Professor, Efferine looked at his chest, her voice trembling. Deculian understood what her gaze meant and smiled a little. There's no need to be surprised, my heart has already stopped. The Villain Wants to Live Chapter 155, Efferine's Time, 3 the field around them was frozen solid, thanks to the snowflake obsidian, shining like a blue jewel as Efferine stared blankly at Deculian, your heart, has stopped. It was hard to understand for Efferine, no, it was hard to understand with anyone's common sense, but, Deculian remained impeccably calm, that's right, a cool wind brushed her neck, causing her skin to prickle, of course, she had expected this to some extent thanks to what the future Efferine said, but the shock of hearing it personally was more than she expected. Efferine chewed on her lips, but found nothing to say, don't worry, I'll live a hundred more years, Deculian smirked and put his hand on Efferine's shoulder, let's go, there's nothing good in staying here longer, then, he turned around and walked off, Efferine watched him and followed a moment later, where are you going, professor? I have a lot to teach you, what? Each word from Deculian was bewildering, not only his kindness, but also the warmth in his tone were very unusual for him, you'll know if you follow me, yes, Efferine walked side by side with him. He was even considerate in slowing his stride, even that was quite strange, nevertheless, Efferine began to imagine what would happen shortly as she followed, Safian opened her eyes, brrr, her eyelids were shaking, strangely, it meant that she needed more sleep, so she closed them again, no, Safian opened them again, 
then, she turned her head, there was a man in the chair next to the sofa she lay upon, Dekulian, you, what are you doing? She was still half asleep, but Safian mumbled the words, his answer was short, I'm protecting your majesty, Dekulian was looking at her, in a proper posture like some show of force, but other than that, he wasn't doing anything, still, Safian felt burdened by his gaze, hmm, tick, tock, brrrrrrr, the only sounds were the clock ticking ever onward and the blizzard knocking on the window, should I sleep more, or not? Safian was thinking about it, but eventually pushed herself up. Then, Dekulian's eyes widened for a brief second as the notification of completion for a quest popped up. He received store currency just from waking her up, certainly, the emperor was someone filled with quests, achievement quest, emperor's cough, completion of achievement, waking up emperor Safian, store currency plus one Safian spoke while Dekulian hid his satisfaction, Dekulian, yes, Safian looked out the window, a snow-covered landscape greeted her, but she wasn't used to it, for some reason, she felt as if the whole world had been turned upside down, feeling ticklish, she belatedly realized this was the first time she had slept in a place other than the imperial palace. Safian looked to the ever-calm Dekulian again, Dekulian, yes, let's play go, yes, Dekulian nodded and prepared the board and stones using psychokinesis, Safian sat up, she came from the north using the investigation as a pretext, but the truth was, this was her real purpose. This game tests one's brain and the joy of meeting someone strong in an otherwise sloppy world, Dekulian, this guy, would forever be her opponent in the game of Go. I was white last time, so I'll take the black stones this time, do as you please? Safian placed the white stones down in front of her, don't we need a referee? Hey! A knight rushed in at Safian's call, yes. Kindigil dash be our referee, be a referee, just stand there, I'll count the seconds, yes. Immediately after, Safian raised her eyebrows and looked at Dekulian, start, yes, tack, Dekulian immediately placed the first piece in the lower right corner. Safian mirrored him, making her first move in the upper right corner, then Dekulian chose the lower left corner, it was an obvious early stage strategy. Professor, Safian spoke after the eighth move, yes, Dekulian answered as they continued, up until this point, the situation was divided between the north and the south, Dekulian's black stones claimed the southern position, while Safian's white stones dominated north, so you've been to the Imperial Palace Library, but, in the next ten moves, Safian rushed to Dekulian's position, in an instant, the white stones reached the lower right corner and began their assault, yes, that's right. Then, Dekulian advanced to Safian's upper right position, not one to avoid conflict, it was a bold move, truly worthy of Dekulian's pride, why? The Imperial Palace contains the history of the continent, already they reached the twenty-fourth move, Safian placed a white stone in the middle of the black stones, it was an aggressive move but Dekulian responded calmly without allowing himself to be intimidated, he blocked the path where Safian was likely to move, what did you want to know about its history? Even as he answered the question, their game never stopped, the ferocious battlefield now moved from the right side to the lower left corner, Safian's special force continued to fight fiercely on the 27th, 28th, and 29th attacks? Did you want to know about the giant? Or, however, the professor remained unflustered, he responded calmly without distraction, he wouldn't fall for such a trick, to express his spirit in one word, it was, refined, did you want to know about me? I want Safian to be happy, those words remained engraved in Safian's head, your majesty, there's no difference between a dream or a memory for me, suddenly, Dekulian mentioned something strange, Safian looked up at him, when I dream, I regain my memories from the past, since he was the body of an iron man, three hours of sleep a week was enough? However, all the memories that appeared during those three hours came from Dekulian's past, but, one day, 
He dreamt of a time that had already disappeared, but sometimes I have memories of things that I haven't experienced. Safian placed the twenty-sixth white stone, the fifty-second move fell with a loud thud, Dekulian's brow wriggled as Safian smiled, ah ha ha, it was a powerful move, to the point that she was proud of herself for coming up with it, Safian was shaking, looking as if she were shimmying her shoulders, but her expression remained as cold as usual, at that moment, in those memories, I was with your majesty, tack? Dekulian spoke with the fifty-third move, causing Safian's body to stiffen, there was no change in the state of the game, the fifty-second move raised the white stone's chance of winning exponentially, and if it continued like so, Safian's victory was clear, it has been a long time, I don't remember much, but your majesty was young, and I was alone, Safian hid her expression, this was one of her defense mechanisms. If he brought up the past world into the current world and had regrets from that world that has already passed and left, she would only feel like committing suicide? That past world was already gone, this professor, it's a shitty dream, is that so? Let's just play, you're about to lose, Safian quickly pointed to the board, Dekulian answered calmly, my chances of winning don't look very high, unless your majesty makes a mistake. If so, did you say something weird on purpose so I would make a mistake? That's up to you to decide, your majesty, arrogant jerk, that's what she said, but Safian felt quite nervous, some time ago, Deculian mentioned something to her about a vanished world? The Deculian then wasn't the Deculian now, but she vowed to remember him, she also wasn't one to forget her vows, boom. A roaring explosion shook the tower from outside, the night escort shouted, Your Majesty. Quickly, Dash shut up, it's not a big deal, go outside and have a look, but, Your Majesty, Dash to Kulian, Safian continued, will you be able to make sure that this match continues smoothly? If that's what Your Majesty wants? Nineteen pieces of wood steel rose from behind to Kulian, Gung, the wood steel pursued the source of the attack. The knight looked at Dekulian, nodding, yes, I understand, the seventh strongest in the empire and the emperor's bodyguard, the head professor of the tower, Dekulian, was reliable, follow my steel, yes, the knight raced along after the wood steel, but, are you all right? It seems to be a surprise attack aimed at your majesty, Safian smirked, it's fake? Even if it were real, it'd only be those weak guys it's just to hide their real intent, if it's a pretext, it's obvious, I expected it since I'm here in the north, if some are caught attacking me, they will leave evidence about their background before they die, they want to play with me, those lowly bastards, tack, Safian continued with the 78th move, it was still a tight match, but after the 52nd move, the game was leaning towards her more and more? I see. Well, you said that you have a disciple before, I still haven't seen her, what was her name? Ephraim, it's Ephraim Luna, then, Safian's brow furrowed, Ephraim, was given the wrong name, it means drop, why would you name someone as a drop? Ephraim meant a drop in the rune language, Dekulian moved without saying a word, tack, there was an unusual echo with the seventy-ninth move? Safian watched in shock. She wasn't aware of it at first, but the more she thought about it, the stronger the meaning of the moves became, oh, the black stone cut the front line in half from the center, it was a fatal point that surrounded the white stones on the right while giving up on the left side that had already died, this was comparable to Safian's fifty-second move, and it was an art-like gamble that even hundreds of her subjects couldn't come up with even if they worked together, such a Beautiful picture, Safian, admiring it vacantly, smiled, that's interesting, Professor Deculian, Deculian looked up, meeting her eyes, I never thought I'd say this in my life. <sighs> the only fun game in this boring world and the best opponent to push her to the limit with a fantastic play, she didn't know if it was just a good game or the opponent, I've never felt this happy before, at this moment. This new art on top of the board that they felt together was enough to be called happiness. Asterisk, 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 one day, two, three, four.
Efferine spent time with Dekulian, to be exact, the future Dekulian, in that time, she had learned a lot from him, not only expanding her magical thesis, but also mana breathing, efficient exercise methods, physical training, and more. She was growing used to this Dekulian, and she could also clearly see her growth and development. Follow me, I have something to show you. Dekulian called to Efferine, today? In their simple but tidy cabin, Efferine, who was polishing her fishing rod, tilted her head and looked back. Now, she was even talking back to him, isn't it too cold today? It's also night, I thought we were going fishing tomorrow? Come, yes, Efferine went outside with Dekulian, he led her through snowy nature, but, the road was almost frozen, and a piercing wind shook her, Efferine grabbed her hair as it whipped about, it's so cold. It's windy, too. Too. It's not far. We're almost there. Step, step. Efferine struggled to walk. The farther she went, the more she became stuck in the snow until it was up to her knees. She couldn't even see an inch ahead because it was dark. There it is. Dekulian pointed somewhere. And suddenly she could see a small fire and fence beside two rocking chairs. Sit down. Dekulian sat down first. Efferine staggered into the empty chair beside him, why are we here? It's freaking cold, look up, Efferine. Pouted and turned her gaze upward, then, she was lost for words, admiration flowed from her wide open mouth. Wow, above her was a sky full of stars, moon, and clouds, their spot was like some observation deck where you could stargaze without any interference, this view, oh? Looking at the stars, she suddenly thought of something, an electric current rushed through her brain, even reaching her fingers, Professor. Efferine quickly looked back to Dekulian, you know, wouldn't I be able to go back and forth? Back and forth? Dekulian frowned while Efferine nodded enthusiastically, yes, yes. You said that the comet was the problem, then, there must be a record of them from the past. This is the future. Then, wouldn't I be able to come back every time there's a shooting star? Objectively speaking, it was a very quick generalization, and it lacked magical logic, but, Dekulian didn't feel any need to point it out maybe, because it was close to the truth, so, you want me to look after you every time you come? What? No. No. I'll have grown up more next time, of course, then, Dekulian produced a document, Efferine took the paper with wide eyes, oh? An investigative report on celestial activities in the North for the past ten years, what? You already knew about it? Hmm, Dekulian smiled lightly and buried himself in the chair, Efferine grinned with excitement as she calculated the date of the next shooting star, oh? It's in ten days. There's also one after a couple of months. I think I could go back and forth two times, don't be so sure, but still, if it's possible, I'll come back twice. You don't have to come back, Dekulian shook his head, I also have somewhere to go, where? He smiled silently, then, he put his hand on top of Efferine's head, my foolish student doesn't need to know. Efferine continued to stare at Dekulian, realizing all that was different about him, the future Dekulian was in a robe, not in a suit just like before, and his smile right now was full of sorrow. Um, Efferine had a lot of questions, why his heart had stopped, what happened in the future, what happened to Sylvia, and where did Drent and Alan go, yes, I'm still foolish, but she didn't ask, she thought she shouldn't, Efferine, look at the sky. Dekulian pointed up, a comet streaked across the distant sky, releasing enormous mana with its glimmering tail, oh? I saw signs of celestial activity last night, I thought it would be tomorrow, but fortunately, it came early? Efferine looked to Dekulian again, she was a bit sad and teary, but soon, she shook her head and forced the words out, it's alright, I can come back soon, really? The future Dekulian offered her a bright smile, he patted her on the shoulder like he was proud, then, as the comet continued to streak across the sky whoosh, the flash of mana sparkled like lightning, coloring the whole world with its radiance, ugh. 
Immediately after, a shock set her head trembling, Ephraim held her temples, stumbling in pain until she tack ran into Deculian's shoulder. It's all right, he glanced down at her, the cold wind vanished, a warmth now surrounding her body, his presence appeared to be filling the area, rest comfortably, when you wake up after a short break, it will be the old days again, ugh, yeah, Ephraim slowly closed her eyes, as if the pain had already disappeared, a small smile came to her mouth, her whole body was warm, like she was lying under a cotton blanket, after a while, when she opened her eyes again just as he said, dash, oh, that's Ephraim. Ephraim was lying near the lake, Ephraim. Ephraim. A cold day and starry dawn, leaf. Leaf. Ephraim. Ephraim looked blankly to Alan and Drent screaming from afar.